but read the entire story. Uh, this is the story, verses 11 through 19 is the story of Jesus healing 10 lepers. Um, he's on his way to Jerusalem. He's passing through Samaria and Galilee. He enters, he enters a village and there's, he's met by these 10 lepers. I don't know if you've ever read what it was like to be a leper in the first century. It was a horrible thing. It was, uh, it was a malady uh, from which we suffered. They suffered. But also, uh, they were ostracized socially from their family and friends and society, isolated and lonely. It was really hard to be a leper in the first century. And these 10 uh, fellows come up to him, and uh, they, they pray, and I consider it a prayer, to Jesus that he would have mercy upon them. And Jesus says to them, go show yourselves to the priest. And uh, then uh, as they went to do so, verse 15 is where I want to pick it up. <clears throat> well, let me end at verse 14. That letter. As they went, they were cleansed. <laughs> the Bible doesn't make a big to-do about it. It just says, as they obeyed Jesus and went to the priest to show themselves to the priest in obedience to Jesus, they were healed. Interesting word uh, translated cleansed. It's a word that means they were acceptable back into society again. Verse 15, then one of them, one of the 10, when he saw that he was healed, turned back, praising God with a loud voice. And he fell on his face at Jesus' feet, giving him thanks. Now, he was a Samaritan. Jesus answered, verse 17, were not ten cleansed? Where are the nine? Was no one found to return and give praise to God except this foreigner? Verse 19, and Jesus said to him, rise and go your way. Your faith has made you well. If you didn't know it, Thanksgiving's next week. So I highly recommend you go tomorrow and buy your turkey if you haven't already done so and i am absolutely convinced that we overlook thanksgiving too much a lot of people are in christmas mode if you don't believe me go to walmart or lowe's uh thanksgiving should not be an overlooked by the way i am grateful we have a an event a holiday on the calendar thanksgiving day we ought to be thankful every day to our God, not just thankful to our fortune, our circumstances, our mom and dad, our jobs, our whatever, but thankful to the Lord. Thankful to the Lord. So I want to poke you a little bit tonight to be thankful. Are you grumpy tonight? Be thou not grumpy it's in the Bible somewhere, I'm sure. Tonight, the title, Obligatory Thanksgiving. Three things I want to point out to you from verses 15 through 19. The first is simply this, divine mercy and obligatory thanksgiving. Divine mercy and obligatory thanksgiving. When Jesus instructed these 10 who, who cried out to him, help us, heal us, do something for us. And he says, go show yourself to the priest. And as they took off, the Bible says they were all healed. They were all healed. They all received the mercy of healing. But one of them, and only one, felt something else. Can you imagine them walking along and they look like a sight to see scabs all over their body face and they usually covered up as best they could to cover uh, these scabs and in the worst cases some appendages would rot and fall off it was a sight to see and suddenly they were healed and can you imagine as they became aware you're you look different well so do you and, and they began to unwrap their arms and their legs and and their skin is I can only imagine pure, like a baby skin. 
forgive me for my sanctified imagination, but I can imagine when Jesus heals, he does a good job of it. And they said, we can go home. Hey, let's go back to the priest. Okay, we got to go to the priest and get the paper, <laughs> the seal of approval. I can see my wife. I can see my children. I can see my friends, my mom and dad. And they can't wait to go home. But one said, oh, wait a minute. Don't you think we ought to go back? And thank Jesus. Obligatory Thanksgiving. It's amazing to me how many people live without the, uh, an awareness that they owe God gratitude. The very blood that flows through your veins is God's blood. The, the air you breathe is God's air. The talent you have, the abilities you have, the life you live, everything you have is from God. Is it not amazing that we go day after day after day without saying thank you to God? Divine mercy and obligatory thanksgiving. Second, divine expectation and obligatory thanksgiving. When that one leper, former leper came back, and again, forgive me, my imagination runs wild, but the text seems to suggest to me in verse 15, when he, he turned back, praising God with a loud voice, I see him coming to Jesus and throwing himself on the ground. And the language is such that he didn't just say, hey, thanks, Lord, I'll see you later. But he is effusive. He's saying, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh, thank you. Because the Bible says in verse 17, Jesus answered, Jesus is responding to this, this glorious, repeated thanksgiving. And Jesus says something with questions. Notice verse 17. Were not ten cleansed? Where are the nine? Was no one found to return and give praise to God except this foreigner? These are not questions. Well, yes, they are. They're question marks. Yes. But they're used like assertions. You know, we do that. Oh, so you want to get tough, huh? That's not a question. That's a threat. Jesus is saying something. What's he saying? I expected all 10 of you to be here. Divine expectation. Let me ask you a question. Do you think God expects you to be grateful? Do you think God wants you to be grateful? Do you think God requires you to be grateful? Is God okay with the fact that you can go day after day after day and not say one time, thank you, God? Is he okay with that? It answers itself. Divine expectation. And obligatory thanksgiving. Third, divine favor. Divine favor. And obligatory thanksgiving. The ten were healed, but only one got an added favor. The divine favor comes in verse 19. Jesus said to this one fellow on his face, thanking him, rise and go your way. Your faith has made you well. That's in addition to the healing. God favored him with insight, with understanding. You acted in faith, and I have honored that. And from now on, that's how you will live your life. I think that God gives us more when we thank him for what he's already given us. Think so? Truism in life. A thankful, happy heart gets more than those who are grumpy about what they already have. That's twice I've said grumpy, right? Thanksgiving's coming. But let's make every day a day of thanksgiving to the Lord. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, I pray we will not fail as your saved people to express gratitude to you. For that would be sacrilege. We understand that giving, giving ventilation to our gratitude measures how much we're thankful in our hearts. And it gives us opportunity to grow. 
I pray that in this season of the year, and not just in the season, but throughout the year, that you will cultivate in us a happy, grateful, thankful heart manifested in expressions of praise and joy. In Jesus' name we pray.